All right, hi everyone. Welcome back to the Land Rover project. Um, just picking this up actually three days after uh, the last video I made. Um, so I did the last video on Wednesday and it's now Saturday morning. So I'm up here relatively early. It's a bit of an overcast day today, so it's not too warm, strangely. It's been like 30, 35 degrees most days, but today it's, it's only 20. So um, got the old jacket on. Anyway, back to the cylinder head issue. In the last uh, couple of episodes, we saw that the cylinder head uh, gasket had been had blown in two parts, between one and two and three and four. Um, and I basically cleaned up the, uh, the cylinder, no, no, the block. I've cleaned the block and the pistons, um, and I'm yet to clean up the cylinder head. So uh, I got a lot of feedback from you guys, which is perfect, it's exactly what I want. So thank you very much for all of the feedback. It was really helpful. Um, a lot of comments about make sure that the um, the cylinder head or the block aren't warped. So <clears throat> I've brought my metal ruler with me today to to check exactly that. So so Stephen, thank you very much for the uh, the video you sent me on uh, on uh, a way of checking the head and the block. So I'll definitely use that principle today. Um, and yeah, once I've done that, if all's fine, I'm really hoping obviously everything's fine. Uh, then I can set about, um, you know, reassembly. A couple of you have said go for a full engine rebuild, <clears throat> but um, uh, I don't think I really need to. Um, I, I don't really have the time to do it either. Yes, it's a good engine to learn on, um, and I don't really remember in the restoration how much I showed of it, but I did actually do quite a lot of work on the engine. I put, uh, I replaced seals, and I did a lot on the timing, uh, not the timing, the timing chain and the tension is new and the, the cogs are all new. So I did actually do quite a lot. Um, and you can't forget that that's a relatively new um, Turner cylinder head. So the, um, there's, I don't know if everybody knows about Turner, uh, Turner Engineering, but they produce cylinder heads uh, or they manufacture cylinder heads um, for unleaded fuel on these cars. And that, although that is quite old, you know, it's like 30 years old, um, it hasn't got many miles on it, that's what I mean. So that, I don't think that needs much work, other than the work that I've shown you in the previous video and the bits that I've got for that. So anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start off by checking the flatness of the uh, block, and then I'm going to clean up the cylinder head and check that as well to see in which direction we go. If that's all fine, as I said, I'm going to put the uh, the new composite uh, gasket on. I'm going to use also uh, some washers. One of you pointed out that the washers were missing on my cylinder head, um, but basically it turns out for a cylinder head using a copper and um, asbestos gasket, uh, you don't use the washers on the cylinder head bolts. Uh, and and but the rule for the um, composite gasket is that you do use them and I haven't got them so they've never there's never ever been any washers on all of my 18 cylinder head bolts so who knows maybe they got lost at some point maybe they've never been there but anyway with this uh, gasket I'm definitely going to put them on but that doesn't mean I need to go and buy some so I'm going to go to a hardware store and get some you know maybe two and a half mil thick steel flat washers uh, for all of the bolts so yeah I'm going to start by checking the flatness of the block Okay, so when I asked uh, on my last video if you think this is clean enough, then most of you are saying it is. Some of you didn't like these um, uh, these nicks and stuff on the cylinder, uh, on the on the pistons. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't think there's much I can do about that really. There seems to be some on here as well, but I think I'm probably going to leave that. Somebody didn't like this either. This nick here doesn't seem to be anything really wrong with it here just a bit of a nick um but anyway checking the block for flatness so what i've got is i mean ideally you'd have a much longer straight edge than this uh, but this is all i have and uh what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna go across diagonally uh and um and check so let me put the those pistons down a little bit and what i've got is a feeler gauge I'm using two thousandths of an inch, inch sorry, um, what's that say? 
I might need to check that. That says 12 there. I'll get a, diff a, a, a two thousandths is what I should be using. So I'll find that. Um, and I'm basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go along diagonally like this and check here for any, uh, any warpage. I don't know what the tolerance is on uh, this engine, so I guess that would be quite useful to know. Um, I did just Google it, but I didn't find anything. But there will obviously be a tolerance on the cylinder head and on the block, I'm guessing. Um, so, you know, an acceptable amount of warpage, uh, but I'm guessing that's very small. On other engines, uh, on, on that um, method that uh, uh, one of my subscribers sent me, it was six thousandths of an inch. Um, acceptable warpage, um, you know, which might be a good guide for this. So anyway, let me find the right feeler gauge setting and then I will get back to it. Okay guys, so um, I wasn't happy with the straight edge that I had um, because it wasn't particularly straight. Uh, so I've gone to the workshop and borrowed a much better one. But as you can see, it's not quite long enough. Um, it's a lot longer than the old one. Um, so I bought two with me. I hope it's not too big because I haven't tried it in here yet, but this is the mother of all straight edges. Look at this thing. This is perfect because I can get diagonally across the entire block like that. Um, so this will be good for diagonals, uh, but I'm going to try this for the entire thing. So on my, let me get this out of the way, first of all. And essentially while I've got this one on there, I'm not going to bother taking it off again. On my feeler gauge, the smallest one I have is four thousandths of an inch. And if I go across, which is, I mean, you all know feeler gauges, but it's very, very thin. I'm going across here, the entire width of the block between the cylinders. And at four thousandths of an inch, it doesn't fit underneath anywhere. So. this way and I'm hoping I'm reading that uh, feeler gauge correctly because it's very old and a bit knackered um, but it has yeah a four on it and I'm guessing that's four thousandths, four thousandths of an inch and there is no gap underneath there whatsoever let me move it across there it won't stand on its own but Will it stand on its own? No, just not. Move it across there. I'm just going to try pretty much everywhere, really. And there is no, there's not a single bit of, well, there's not a single location where that, that feeler gauge goes through. So my guess is, I'm going to try with a smaller one in a minute. Let me take this one away. Oh God, it's heavy. Heavy, but very useful. Let me try this across the, across the block. And this one does stand up on its own. there
Nej. I'm going to drop it, because if I do that, it might dent the head or the block. I mean, I don't know, I'm just sort of doing this for the first time, but every which way I try this, there is nothing, nothing that concerns me. Nothing whatsoever. Okay, so I'm pretty confident that the block is absolutely fine. We'll just do these along here. Oh, move that in a minute. Yep. Maybe this needs cleaning along here. Something there. No, that's fine. Okay, so I'm pretty confident that the head is absolutely fine. Uh, not the head, sorry, the block is true, which is a good start. Okay, so I've actually just found another feeler gauge in my... Um, my workbox, which is much clearer. Uh, it's still imperial, but uh, it's also got the two thousandths of an inch. So, let me do that again. Okay, so just cover, uncovering the, um, the cylinder head here. We can get away, get rid of that now. Don't need that anymore. Um, and I'm just going to work out the best way to support this because obviously I need to clean it and I don't want to take any of the manifold off. Um, so I'm just going to work out the best way of, of putting it up the other way, probably on some axle stands actually. Okay, so I've actually just decided to uh, put it up this way. Um, so what I'm going to do now is give it a bit of a clean and uh, and see what we can see. But yeah, as I said before, these these ports here are are pretty pretty gunked up. Not too bad, but I think these are the water ports here, the waterways. Look, look, stuff sort of comes out of that. So we're definitely definitely going to give those a clean. Um, and see how we get on. So, that is looking a lot better. I've got it quite clean. Um, when I Google sanding a cylinder head, it, starts, it says you should start with 80 to 100 grit, but I guess that means if you are sanding it flat by hand. Uh, so I started with 6,000, uh, just to be on the safe side. Um, and that's just basically got it clean because that's all I was looking to do. So it's very smooth along here. Um, some of these areas here where the ports are, the water cooling passages I would I would think um, I don't know maybe they're slightly corroded or difficult 
I guess that would have happened. Oh, they're not too bad, but I guess that would have happened when it was sitting for such a long time. This one's come up a little bit better. Maybe they just need a bit more cleaning. Um, yeah, and the valves, I haven't really touched those yet, so I guess I need to get onto those and clean those up. But they don't look too bad, to be honest. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the straight edge to this now and see what it's like. Okay, so I managed to get the cylinder head up the other way, which is obviously much better, much easier. So I can go along now with the feeler gauge to see what we have. So going across. Nothing there. Going diagonally across here. Nothing there. Do that way. I'll obviously use the, the long one to go straight across, but between there's nothing there. Let's go across there. So that seems to be sitting. Sort of bites a little bit there, look. But I think that's because there's, yeah, there's a little edge on that port there. Although it goes under there. So we've got a little bit there where it goes under. Just bites. If I hold it flat down on there, it just bites. It doesn't go straight through, it just bites on, on two thousandths of an inch. Let's have a look there. Nothing across there. Nothing across there. Nothing there. Okay, so at the moment there's only a slight bit there. Bring it down here. Now, let's do that with the long one. Hang on. Where is it? Just bites ever so slightly there a little bit. On Okay, so on the entire length, I'm pretty... Yeah, there's nothing on the entire length and the width. That's absolutely fine. Okay, so guys, a bit of an update. Um, I've just been doing some more cleaning up here, cleaned up the, uh, the valves here very carefully, cleaned up the ports in here. Um, I've still got a couple of bits to do here, but it's, you know, I think they're gonna be fine. Um, what I'll do is when the car's back together, I'm gonna <clears throat> I'm gonna flush the uh, the engine um, with basically with a hose pipe just to just to wash anything out. Um, but so where are we are where are we in terms of tolerances and warpage? So if the tolerance on this cast iron head is six thousandths of an inch, I've been testing at uh, two thousandths of an inch. So way finer. And there was one small spot here uh, where it goes under, 
but then it sort of stops just here. It's literally just here. Um, and given that the rest of it is absolutely fine, as you saw, I tested it with this huge straight edge here. The length, the width is all fine. Um, I'm absolutely happy with that. I don't think it needs, well, I'm, I'm pretty sure it doesn't need skimming. I know a couple of you are very adamant on, on uh, whatever happens, you have to have it skimmed, but I really don't think I need it doing, um, especially if everything is within tolerance. So it would just be wasting time and money. So I'm pretty confident to put this back into the car with the new gasket, which is over there on the chair. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, as I say, pretty confident. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Um, what I've got to do before I do that is, I mentioned it before, but these are the cylinder head bolts and I've never had washers with these. So the rule is, according to you guys, the people who know, um, if you're using a copper gasket, then you don't use washers. But if you're using a composite gasket, which that is, you need washers. So steel washers, um, you can get them uh, from Land Rover. They're incredibly expensive. I, last time I checked, they're about 60 euros or 60 pounds even for a set. Um, so I'm going to go to the hardware store and get uh, some um, stainless steel um, washers. And I've checked online, they've got them. So I was just wanting to do all this work to make sure that the, the head and the block wasn't warped before I go to the hardware store to get those nuts, uh, to get those washers. But I'm gonna do that now because I am confident that the head and the block are fine, which is brilliant news. Um, to be absolutely honest, I hadn't really considered any warpage uh, before you guys mentioned it. So having done these checks now um, has really, you know, set my mind at ease really. And I hope, hope it has yours too. So um, yeah, so I'm gonna tidy up a little bit, clean my hands and take the BMW to the DIY store and get those uh, washers. So I've also got to check whether I've got enough coolant as well. I've got distilled water because I always use distilled water on all of my cars uh, for coolant. Um, and I've got to check, as I say, whether I've got the, the coolant for the Land Rover. So, but that doesn't, if I haven't, it still doesn't stop me from putting the car back together. So let's check. Okay guys, so I just got back from the hardware store, took about half an hour uh, to get there and back, which wasn't too bad on a Saturday. It was pretty busy actually, but um, success. I actually found before I left a washer, which was pretty much perfect size really um, for the uh, cylinder head bolts. Um, and I managed to find exactly the same one in stainless steel. So I think it's about two and a half millimeters thick, internal dimension, uh, diameter is 13 mil, I think it's 24 outside, so, um, and it's stainless steel, so I'm pretty pleased with that, so I've got 18 of those. Um, yeah, so uh, I also got some distilled water, which is, oh, still in the back of the car, and what I'm probably going to do is, uh, once I've got everything back together, I'm going to, as I said, run a hose through the coolant system and uh, flush it out that way. Whoops, let me tell you what I'm doing here first. At the moment, I'm just sort of cleaning these passageways out with like a, I don't know, what do you call that, pipe cleaner? And it's pretty good. Um, they sort of go a bit like a rabbit warren, really. They sort of, sort of go in like that. And you can get in there and, you know, clean some stuff. So I'll keep doing that for a while. And I'm also going to drain the rest of the system. So I've connected a hose up to there uh, into my uh, tray down there and a water catcher and I'm just going to drain the rest of that and obviously um, when I've got the car going driving again I'm going to take it just down uh, just down uh, to the next building where there's a hose pipe and I can um, I can just flush the entire system out from from up here so quite looking forward to doing that because obviously by the by the looks of this it don't look that good um, let me see if I can Oh, I'm not going to pull that out because it's just disgusting water, um, but you get the idea. So carry on here for a bit, clean up the head a little bit more, check the studs, the torques on the studs for the manifold, and then start reassembling. So really quite exciting.
Okay, so I've cleaned out all of the uh, oil ports here and the passages. Um, I think actually there's just one here. I think it comes through here, through this banjo, and then uh, up here into the rocker shaft, uh, because here there obviously isn't anything. But yeah, I've cleaned that up and I'm gonna whip it over and just do the bottom again because obviously there's some crud has, has, has gone through, I'm sure. And then I am going to, well, put it back in the car. I'm gonna do a little bit more cleaning along in these, these lifters here and, uh, and then put it back in. Okay, so just before I put the head gasket on, I'm just going through these lifters and putting some oil in them so they don't go in dry. I'm going to do the same for the cylinder head bolts as well. Oop, did I do that one? Just so they don't go in dry as well. I'm not going to put too much on the bolts, just, just put a light film of engine oil on. And what I'm probably going to end up doing is, is um, uh, Replacing the oil as well in the engine. I didn't do it that long ago, which is a bit unfortunate, but I guess any work like this Just allows Dust and crud into the engine and I don't want to do that I suppose the only thing I haven't done is cleaned out these okay gave all of those bolt holes a clean just wondering if it might be worth just trying one in there let's have a quick look how they're looking Got a little bit of moisture in there still. Jesus. Look at that. Oh, they still need some cleaning, I think, guys. Okay, so some might call this overkill, but uh, seeing as I couldn't get the stuff out of those bolt holes, I really want to do that. So, what I'm going to do is a bit more brake clean in there and blow it out with the air gun. Okay, that was really messy doing that, but um, and I've got brake clean all over me, but I think uh, it was well worth doing because I've got all the oil and all the crap out of those uh, those holes now. So, time to put the cylinder head gasket in. Make sure it's clean, actually. Lining that up. Okay, let me have a look from up here.
Okay, so I don't know if you can see that now, but I'm just coming in with the cylinder head. I've got it on the engine hoist. And what I've done just to locate the gasket is to put some cable ties on there left and right. So hopefully that works. Head down now. Not exactly level, which doesn't help at all. Um, hmm. I need, I need someone else. Yeah. Okay, further back. Hmm. And that is it. Ho ho ho. Oh, it was just getting caught on this this here. This has to go straight back in. So Cylinder head is back on. It's not entire. I got caught on this HT lead. It was pulling down on that really hard. So I'm gonna to have to check that that's not broken. It's really pulling down. Anyway, that's how it goes. Yeah, let me take the, the weight off it entirely now. There we go. Oh, I need the tripod again now. Just to remove those straps and then I can get rid of the lift. So that's the lift out of it. Let's get rid of that as well. And we just have to make sure it's in line. too high on that. I'm just going to put a cylinder head bolt in, first of all, uh, just to locate it, I think. As I said to you before, I was going to put um, a very small amount of engine oil on these bolts. Oh, and get one of the new washers. Uh, I'm just going to, which one is that? That is the one right at the back. It seems to be sitting on something still, which is a bit annoying. And I don't know what that is. Is it the ja Hmm. Yeah, it was sitting on the exhaust. Ha. Huh. Not anymore. Right. But now I've got to locate it. Oh man, this isn't, this isn't completely straightforward, I can tell you that much. Okay. So that was quite a lot of faffing about actually, trying to line up the head on the block and get the gasket in line. So I've finally done it with these two bolts here. They are in the right place, but they're missing their washers at the moment. And here, I noticed I didn't blow one of these holes out, so it's still got brake fluid in. Uh, uh, brake cleaner in there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lightly coat the bolts in engine oil, new engine oil, and then I'm going to start the process of talking them down. Okay, so I've got all of those head bolts in here on the right and the left hand side. As I say, the, um, I've, I've put a smidgen of um, engine oil on the threads, not much at all. 
And now I've got to put these central ones on, but obviously the rocker cover has to go on first. So I'm gonna go and get that, maybe make sure this is all clean again. Get the rocker cover and put that on now. It's all pretty good. I'm gonna check the base of the rocker cover as well, to see if any of that stuff is on it. Because there was like a ridge around these, uh, these fittings here when I took it off. Okay. So, rocker cover. No. Nope. Firstly, we need to put in the push rods. All right. I'm also going to put a little bit of oil on there as well, on the end of each push rod, just so they don't go and dry. I know I've put it in the lifter already, but I think it's best just to, just to put it in. Cool. Now it's time for the rocker cover, I think. Let me do some checks then. Those are clean. That's all in. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. I tell you what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some oil on the top of the... valves. Don't want those going. And also, I'm going to put some in the top of the push rods as well. You should probably use assembly paste for this, but I haven't got any. So I read up on, on that and they said, yep, yeah, you can use assembly paste. I think it's called assembly paste, like the cherry color stuff. Um, but uh, in the old days, they used to use engine oil. So I'm using engine oil. I hope that's okay. And I've got to also put the um, oil feed back in. Ah, wait, I almost forgot. I need to mend the broken one. Where is the broken one? Here. So guys, just stop a minute. I've got to, do you remember this? This is where is it? This one's broken and I've gotten a replacement, so I need to replace that now. Okay, so I've got that fixed, or fitted at least. Uh, that's the old broken one, and the new one is in. I haven't tightened it up entirely because obviously I have to set it again. Oops. Put that to one side. Okay. push it down into place. Hope it doesn't all spring out now. Seems to be going in okay. I'll see the centre me here. Okay, back to some time lapse I think because I'm now going to put those other bolts in.
Okay, so I was just going to uh, install this second locating pin for the rocker shaft, but uh, rather disappointingly, having cleaned out this hole here where it's supposed to go and uh, looked inside, there is no locating hole in the rocker cover. So I'm guessing there's only one because well, I'm also, I doubt that this is in two parts, this rocker cover, this rocker shaft, I should say. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I can imagine this is just one shaft going down through here and looking into there, there is no pin locating hole. So I guess that is just remains empty. Okay, so I'm gonna tighten these um, bolts up the correct way this time. Obviously, some of you noticed that I, I undid them in the incorrect order. Uh, I, I started with one rather than 18. So if you're undoing them, you have to go 18 down to one. But if you're doing them up, you go from 1 to 18, obviously. Uh, I've just checked this, the torque settings. So it's 89 Newton meters for the um, main bolts and the larger rocker shaft bolts and 24 Newton meters for the smaller ones. So 89 and 24. Right, so that is everything talked down. I'm just gonna carry on putting stuff back together. What I want to do really, I have to see if I've got another gasket or not, but that um, thermostat was looking pretty clogged up actually uh, before. So ideally I need to take that off that thermostat housing and clean the thermostat. But yeah, I'm just gonna go around putting everything back on. I'm quite pleased, those are my new uh, washers there. Um, obviously what I won't forget to do, oh, I've got to put that back on that uh, oil feed. What I won't forget to do this time is after 100 miles, go around and talk everything again. Um, and I guess I'll video that so there's proof. Um, yeah, it's quite hard work. It's quite a lot to do. It's not just like a, <laughs> it's not just like a day's job. It's like more like two days job so far. Um, and I dare say this video I'll have to I'll have to split into two sections again. But yeah, you know, I'll I'll upload them at the same time. Um, otherwise, it just gets too long. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll carry on and uh, keep you updated. Okay, guys. Um, I've just looked at the time and it's like three thirty. So I've been up here pretty much all day. So I'm actually going to call it a day now. Um, it's all of those things, you know, it's, it's often like that, you know, you think, oh, I can get that done. I know exactly what I've got to do and it won't take that long. But actually, then you're rushing it and it's just not worth it. So tomorrow is another day and uh, it's Sunday and I'll be able to come up tomorrow and finish things off, you know, in a relaxed manner. So I'm going to leave the video there just for today and come back up tomorrow. So I'll see you then.